here's a little bit about how I work as a coach. So I fundamentally believe that you understand how you work best. You may have been taught to ignore that for much of your life, or you might not have spent a lot of time trying to formulate that into words or figuring it out deeply, or you might have, but there's still areas in which you haven't figured out yet. But you have years of your actual lived experience doing things and knowing what works and what doesn't work for you. So I'm not gonna say, okay, here's a few tips that work for ADHD, this should work for you, because they don't work for everyone. I tend to work more on figuring out the underlying thoughts in a situation. Like you're trying to get this assignment done at work and you want to do it, you need to do it, but you just can't get yourself to do it. What's going on? I'm gonna ask questions to start noticing your thoughts around it. And there's usually some sort of painful thought or an association to something that's old or some sort of inner resistance to it. It might be a very practical thing, but there's usually some sort of underlying thought or emotion that's also influencing you. And I do a lot of work on resolving those painful thoughts, dissolving them, relieving them, seeking the truth, and freeing ourselves from the thoughts and beliefs that cause us unnecessary pain. And usually what happens is when those get more cleared up, the practical stuff becomes a lot easier. And that's when your brain will automatically be like, oh, I could do this, or I know I work well when I do this kind of thing. I often don't even need to suggest things at that point because you know what works for you. You've just got a lot of crap in your head from other people telling you that you're not good at stuff and you've believed it because it seems like the truth. It feels very true, but usually it's not the whole truth. What might be more true is that you're not good at doing things in a particular way because a standard way doesn't work for your brain or your motor skills or your sensory system or whatever it is. But if you're trying to force yourself to do something someone else's way and it conflicts with how you function, of course you're gonna get pretty crappy results. And when you do that enough, you're gonna have a lot of bad associations with it. So when you try and force yourself to do that, of course there's gonna be a lot of resistance. And that may have happened so many times for so many years that you don't even notice that that's what's going on anymore. It just feels like this is the way things are. Or it might be more true that you've never actually been taught how to do something. Maybe you've just had people assume that telling you to do it was enough and then criticize you for not catching on. That's sadly incredibly common. And we can, de and we can deconstruct that one too and all of the other false beliefs that cause unnecessary pain. So that's the stuff that I love to work on. When each one of those thoughts gets freed up, sure, we can do practical stuff too, and I've got lots of ideas for that stuff. You probably have lots of ideas that work for you better than what I can suggest, but sometimes it's helpful to get some ideas to get you started. But I don't tend to start with the practical suggestions. Otherwise, you're just trying to force yourself into someone else's box. Here's a bit on how to prepare for sessions. A lot of my clients, because we're all autistic, we want to be very prepared. Have all our ducks in a row, have, the, have a list of all the things that you want to talk through in our sessions together. And that's great when it comes naturally, but it doesn't need to be that clear. Having an idea of what topic you want to work through might be something like, there's this thing coming up and I'd like to have a better skills for dealing with it this time. Or I recently had this reaction to something and intellectually I know it was out of proportion to the actual event, but I still reacted this way and I can't figure out why. Can we figure that out? Or it might be something that you're struggling with or that keeps weighing on you and you need to process or that you're having a lot of anxiety around, even though it's something that you want or need to do. The question for the day might be, what's going on with that? It can be that big, it's all right. So if you have some idea of what you want to talk about or what you want to be different by the end of a session, that's helpful. And if not, I can help you find something at the beginning of a session. It's usually pretty easy to find something juicy. A little bit about my communication style. It might be useful to mention that you can be very direct with me. I'm not likely to take offense or assume the worst possible interpretation. 
So if you have a question or want me to want to tell me something, you don't need to soft pedal around it or spend a lot of effort trying to figure out how to say it so that I don't take it the wrong way. If something is phrased awkwardly, I'm not going to interpret that as you being rude. You can ask me how many minutes we have left and I'll simply give you an answer. I'm not going to assume that you're bored or anything like that. I'm also likely to take your comment simply at face value. Think about the merit of whatever you have to say and respond to that. Also, as you get comfortable with me, I hope that you can give me feedback about what does and doesn't work for you. And because I know that's not always easy right off the bat, when I have an idea of something that might be helpful, I'll describe what it is that I'm proposing, and then give you the option about whether you want to try it. And I'll often ask for confirmation two or three times and reinforce that you really do get to choose. You don't have to go along with what I propose out of habit or people pleasing. And when you say that you don't want to try that, or no, that's not really my style, or that kind of thing hasn't worked for me in the past, I'm just gonna say, okay, and move on. I'm not gonna push or try and talk you into anything. By the way, if you ever want me to explain what the point of something is, or why I asked something, I can do that. I'll just give you a direct explanation. I see no value in hiding the how or the why of what I do. Do you really need one-on-one -on -one coaching? I don't know. Probably not. Could it be useful? Probably. This isn't about whether or not you're capable of figuring stuff out yourself, or if you could get a lot out of my free materials or the courses or group stuff that I put out. I'm sure you can, and I hope you do. I hope you have. It's more about, would you like a shortcut so you don't have to figure out everything on your own? Would you like some help personalizing that general info translating it to your particular life. That's more of what it's about. One thing about the free content that I put out is it's kind of scattered. It's, here's a thought that I had today, or here's something that came up in my life. And that's useful, but it's not structured content. The workshops, courses, and eBooks that I make, those are more structured. They take a specific topic and work through it systematically, but it's still a high level overview of that topic. It can't be personalized to every individual. It's meant to address patterns and commonalities that we're facing, but not your particular situation. Still, I hope that you can apply a fair amount of it to your particular situation and get a good deal out of, of use out of it. That's the point. And if that's what you need at the moment, that's great. You might not need the one-on-one -on -one approach. As for me, when I'm following other people's content, I'm a pretty quick learner, and I'm often able to put those general concepts into practice on my own. But sometimes, with certain things, I need a little more help in the implementation of it, or help seeing aspects of my own situation that I have a hard time seeing myself because I'm so enmeshed in it. And an outside perspective helps, especially that's one that has more experience with the subject than I do. And it can save me a, a ton of time and effort, and even money, to pay someone who can quickly figure out where I'm getting stuck and who knows how to get unstuck. The biggest value that people get out of working with me one-on-one -on -one is that I can meet them where they are now and quickly figure out what's useful for them at this stage of their journey, what they're wrestling with now, and we can get to the heart of it 